Oh ho, twangity ping. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Captain Xavier and I have a bow. And I'm sure you're asking, why though? Yes, it is in fact the Why Though Bow, designed by Artificial Armory, and this one was sent to me by Foam Demic. Links will be in the description, of course. And uh, this is fun. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a blather about it, but first, let's go get some firing footage, because it's just fun. Right, now to plink. Come on, seat, seat, there we go. This is, in fact, an actual bow. Uh, it doesn't fire arrows in the traditional sense, but unlike all of the bows that Nerf has made, which are actually either springers or stringers, this actually uses tensioned bow arms. So these are fiberglass fence posts or fence stakes, I assume. Um, and they are, in fact, what provides the power. It is, in fact, tension from those arms that is actually powering the blaster. There is no spring. The string is not stretchy. Uh, it is from bending, the bending of the arms that provides all of your power. Um, and despite the fact that it's only about a 16 pound draw, which is really very light for a bow, uh, this thing is consistently hitting 212 FPS which is a bit spicy for some games. Luckily, there are obvious ways to reduce that. A longer string would put less tension on the bow arms, which would reduce the power. You can also simply remove the middle of the three arms. So it, as you can see, it currently has three in there, but you can take the middle one out and that dropped the FPS for me down to somewhere between 55 and 70, or, or 155 and 170. So it dropped between 60 and 40 FPS just by removing that middle limb, which is still a scotch spicy for the games that I play in. Uh, but there are other ways you can reduce the uh, the power. A shorter barrel would almost certainly result in slightly less power. You could lengthen the string and remove a bow arm. Just ways to tweak it. You'd need to tweak it to get it to the exact FPS that you want. Uh, but it's really, really nifty and remarkably simple. It feeds from an inline hopper. Uh, which is fed from the top using this little valve. You open this up, load darts in there, and then as you fire, it feeds into the, the barrel and shoots it out. You do need to make sure that this is closed or it'll shoot all your darts up over your shoulder, which is hilarious, and I have no footage of that because I don't wanna, I probably should, but I'm not going to because I have to go back out and film and it's cold. Anyway, um, now I, there is, it doesn't feed as reliably as one would hope, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. Let me grab some darts. So like I said, to reload, you open up this valve and simply put darts in. They will feed down. That one's a bit chewed up. And it's mostly gravity that's going to feed them in. Uh, the problem is there isn't any kind of a, a weighted or, or spring-loaded stopper to force them in, so it's just gravity. And as you get fewer and fewer darts, there's less weight to kind of help feed them in. But you can tell if it's seated. Uh, right now it is. And you can tell because there's only just a little bit of a dart sticking up right there. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna show this on the range. To the range! To further demonstrate the whole seating issue, uh, right now you can see there's just a little bit of a dart sticking out. That means that there is a round actually seated in the barrel, and if I pull and release, it will fire. And in this case, because there was so much extra weight from all the rounds in there, it double fired. Now you'll see there's a hole dart sticking out. That means there isn't a round seated, and we need to jostle it. And now you can see it has seated down, and now it will in fact fire. And now, not seated, but if we give this just a, a partial prime, you can see it has now, in fact, seated. I got the 100! I got it! I was going for the 75, but you don't need to know that. But I'm telling you anyway because I'm honest. I want to hit the 75. See if I can reach out there and hit it. Nope, not quite. Nope. Nope. I will get that 75. You just wait. 
So yeah, that's how you can tell that it's fed. And right now, like I said, it's fed, so I can fire it. And kerplink. And there, it, it, the weight brought it down and it fed. You can tell, you can see right there, it's fed. And there it is again. And there it is again. But now it isn't. Now there is no longer enough weight from the darts to really force it in. You have to kind of shake it and it'll go in. Um, it's feeding nicely in here, so that's nice. And then there it's kind of stuck. And like I said, you can kind of pump it, prime the pump. And I don't know if you could hear that little bit of punk. That was it. You could see the dart seated down and now it is in fact loaded. So yeah, it, uh, it takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of finesse, but once you, you learn it, you, you don't have to look. You can feel and tell whether it's actually seated. Um, it's kind of neat. Um, I would love to see somebody come up with some kind of a spring-assisted um, hopper. I don't know how you would do that. I can think of a couple of ideas, but I don't know if they would work. Um, one would just be to have a small enough light enough spring that you can just push in after the last dart, but I don't know how you would get this closed around that. Um, and I don't know if it's worth the effort. Um, as long as you keep the hopper full, it feeds fairly well, as you saw there. Now, sometimes not so much. Some darts seem to work better. Like I said, the worker darts seem to feed better because they have a slightly different shaped head. Um, and that might just be me thinking they feed better when they don't actually, I haven't put nearly enough rounds to actually be, you know, an exhaustive test on that concept, but I like it. There is a bit of Picatinny rail on it if you wanted to put an optic or a dart holder or whatever you wanted to put on that bit of Picatinny rail. It's just neat that it's there. It does have a scar barrel. Um, you can put whatever on, one on there. It's the standard barrel size that, you know, pretty much everything takes. So yeah, it's, it's pretty nifty. Let's go uh, fling some more foam. Ah, oh, two rounds and neither of them hit. I think that was two rounds again. I got the 100 again. Still haven't got the 75. I will. I will. I got it. There's a double shot. One of them was bound to eventually hit. Let's, uh, let's plank a little bit closer. So I can hit a bottle. Ah. Oh. I hit the stand and knocked one over. I'll take it. Ah, that one I hit. That was even the one I was aiming for. Oh. Ah. That's a lot of fun. And given that I'm hitting the 100, it's got the power. And decent accuracy. I mean... The pie pans don't get bigger the further back they get, so, uh, yeah. Let's talk about it a little bit more. Then I shall probably plink some more. My arm is getting tired. I am so out of shape for archery. I'm so out of shape in general. Pears are a shape, right? Now there is a tale of woe surrounding me getting my hands on one of these for review. Uh, I saw one in action at Fort Borst and thought it was really cool. I liked that it was an actual bow, was thinking about getting one. And then lo and behold, Foamdemic reached out and said, hey, would you like to review this? And I said, absolutely. And that was months ago. Uh, it took them a while to actually have the bandwidth to be able to, to you know, to print something that they weren't getting paid for to send to me. And I unfortunately had failed to confirm that they knew that I was left-handed. I take it for granted that most people know that by now, but I realized that that's just not a safe assumption I should be making uh, because they sent me the right-handed version, um, which you wouldn't think would be much of a difference, but it turns out it is. One, it is in fact, the grip is shaped specifically to be held by one hand or the other, and if you hold it in the other one, it's kind of awkward and lumpy and uncomfortable. Uh, but the bigger issue is that the feed for reloading is on the wrong side. So when you're holding it this side, the feed is on the side of your free hand, and it makes it much easier to load than if it was coming out on this side, which makes it a little bit more awkward to reload. Um, so I pointed this out, you know, sorry, I, I failed to mention that I'm left-handed, please, you know, would you mind? And they were perfectly willing to send me over a left-handed one. But, either, we're not actually sure what happened yet. <laughs> uh, either they accidentally printed a previous iteration of the grip where the barrel didn't seat in as far as it does now, and it created a very weak shear point right there, and it just snapped and then was no good. 
or I failed to seat the barrel in all the way. Um, could have been either. Uh, I did not, in fact, uh, pound it in with a mallet. I just friction fit it in, and so I might not have gotten it all the way in to the point where there was enough structural stability to hold it, but it broke. Uh, luckily, they are wonderful, kind individuals, and they sent me another one. This one, I did make sure I seated it all the way, used a mallet very carefully, uh, tapped it in until it was absolutely not going in any further, and it has held so far. So, hooray. That's, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, uh, I like it. I've always liked bows. I've liked archery since I was a small child. Uh, Robin Hood stuff and Forestman Lego sets and I had a bow and then all the stuff I did in medieval um, stuff involved a lot of archery. So I, 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 I like having an actual proper bow bow. It just, it feels right and I like it. So I will definitely run this at some point once I can get the power down. Either that or I'll run it in the high FPS rounds. Um, just so that I have something that works in the high FPS but isn't crazy. So yeah, it'll be fun. So I dig it. Artificial armories. Why though, Bo? Very, very cool. If you're interested in this sort of thing, link is in the description. Get yourself one. First shot always seems to be double now. That's actually pretty cool. Double shot. Oh, so close. Oh. One shot and hit the 50 and one plooped. Ping. It's got a lot of power. It's putting some... I need to pound those front targets out and repaint them. People keep telling me that. Maybe one of these days I'll do it. Today is not that day. It's too cold. It's cold. Fun. Last load. See, did I hit the 50 a bunch? Well, there's one hit on the 50. Double shot, one of them hit, I'll take it. Two hits, double shot, two hits. <laughs> I wish I'd done that on purpose. Oh, I hit the 75, I'll take it. hit again! I'm really not doing that on purpose, but it sure looks cool. Last round. Here we go. Ow. Oh. oh well. Anyway, the wide elbow. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Twangity.